Hey everybody, think we're think we're on here. I think we're live. I think we're live. Streaming straight from or, Dublin. Or can right I feel now. like TV, uh, TV anchors right here? Um, uh, welcome, welcome to the Academy on Air um, this morning, February twenty first. It's a it's a very nice spring uh, spring summer day here in Dublin, but um, we're inside talking about um, automation um, and trying to give you guys some best practices. So, quick introductions. Uh, my name's Eric. Um, I am a uh, regional automation specialist based here in Dublin. Uh, I've been in Dublin for about a year and a half now. I spent my first year at Google um, in a strategy role in the headquarters in, in California, um, and originally I'm from, uh, I'm from New York. Uh, happy to be here with, a, with an Irishman right here. Yeah, so my name is Pork. I'm on the same team as Eric on the automation side. I've been in Google for six years, predominantly on the sales side, but worked in programmatic side in Sydney for about two years as well. So I'm delighted to be here uh, talking about all things automation. So guys, today the purpose of this Hangout on Air is to talk about the value of automation, particularly from a creative perspective and from a smart campaign perspective. So what we really want you to take away from this session is an understanding of why automation is so important from, from a creative perspective. Deep dive into the products that offer you that automation power and then answer some of the questions that may arise uh, as we discuss these topics. So why automation? You would have seen this stat many times. Each day in Google, we get about 3.6 billion different queries. Of those queries, about 15% of those have never been seen before. So there's a huge amount of searches that are happening that we've never seen before. And from an advertiser perspective, it means how do we tailor the right message to our user? And when we think about that user, they all are, they all, all are incredibly different. Even we're thinking of a single query, say someone looking to book a hotel. One instance, we have Charles, He's working for his company and they're planning a retreat. Maybe they've hit their sales targets. Maybe they've launched a new product. And he's looking for a certain type of hotel. He's looking for free Wi-Fi. He's looking for conference rooms. And in addition, he's looking for discounts so they don't go over budget. Then we have Diana. And so Diana is in a slightly different perspective. She's looking to have a family vacation. And what she's really looking for is a way to keep the kids busy with a swimming pool, maybe having some time out for herself and her partner in the form of a spa and mean tea and a child center so they can get that time away. And then we think of Sally and Sally is working with couples to try and book their dream wedding. And when she's thinking about booking a hotel, she's thinking about fine dining. She's thinking about a big event and she's looking to get the best discount on the rooms for all the guests coming. So we have a single query there, booking a hotel, but we've got completely different users and completely different intents. So how do we solve for this? Well, it's incredibly difficult at the moment. If you consider Rebecca, she's an account manager who's trying to reach all of these customers and match their needs. She knows that she has to target her message to her user. She knows she has to tailor it, but she doesn't really know how to do it given the fact that there's over a thousand different ad formats that she can use across video, display, and search. And she also knows that she can't just skip this step and that one message doesn't fit all users. She not only has to reach Charles who's, or Charlie, who's looking to book a corporate weekend away, she has to reach Diana, who's looking for that holiday break, and Sally, who's trying to organize a dream wedding for, for a couple. And there's many other customers there as well. That's just three examples that we have uh, broken out. So, so many things for her to consider. What keyword, what ad text, what image? So how can Rebecca deliver the right message to each of these users? For us, it breaks down into two main solutions. It's going to be smart creatives, 
making sure that we're showing the right message to the right user at the right moment. And then as we scale that out, using automated campaigns so that we can acquire the right users in that context. The beauty of smart creatives is that it allows you to tailor the message for every single moment by providing our system with the assets and allowing us to use our machine learning algorithms to deliver the right message to that user. I just want to add real real quickly, I mean, we've, we've seen kind of the, the flow through these slides. We started with like all of the ridiculous number of, of, of queries that we see on Google every day, right? Every single, it, it's scary to kind of think about how much is sort of going on on the web, but it's also um, an incredible opportunity. Every single time you search something, every single time you visit a website, that's a that's a, a little tiny fragment, a little tiny signal about who you are as a person and what you're what you're interested in. Um, and you've heard Google talking about um, you know things like machine learning, artificial intelligence, um, all that stuff in, in the past couple you know year or two. And you know what that what that really is. It, it sounds very technical. What it really is, is is us trying to make sense of that data and make sure we can figure out the the very very specific intent of maybe you know we saw it already three different users who are looking for the same thing but they're not the same person and they have kind of you know different needs and um, will respond differently to different creatives as well. And that's really what um, all of this automation is about. It's about not just having a lot of data but being able to to make sense of it, analyze it, um, and allow you guys as um, as account managers or at each, as, as, as customers to um, act on that data and get insights from it in a very easy and automated way. So um, we, we want you to, to kind of embrace this automation so that you can uh, make the most of all of that data that there is available. Yeah, I think that's an important thing to note. We're drowning in the data at the moment, but we need to find ways to use it. And these solutions really allow you to tailor uh, exactly as Eric was saying. Okay, so uh, I am going to um, kind of dive into some of the more um, the more tactical elements here on the on the smart creative side. That's my uh, particular specialty. I'll take that from you, Port, so we can flip along. Um, so we have uh, kind of three three main smart creative pro products that we're uh, that we're going to focus on here. Uh, on the search side, we have uh, the new responsive search ads, which uh, you'll see the acronym RSA very often. Uh, we have dynamic search ads, uh, DSA is the acronym for that one. Um, and then on the display side, we have responsive display ads. Um, there are kind of little nuances between each of these other, th uh, other than the obvious differences between, uh, between platforms, but um, each of them kind of, ha uh, you know, is, is sort of fulfilling that same principle. We want to, we want to give the right message to, that, to, the, to, to the right user, the right ad creative at the right, um, at the right time. Uh, the other thing uh, we, we, we really want you to, we're not gonna go into, into too much detail today, but um, smart bidding is a, is a really, really important component of any um, smart creative strategy. So um, when we talk about automated campaigns, all of those kind of have smart bidding built in. We really don't, we really wanna move customers away from manual keyword, um, manual keyword bidding. There's so many different signals, so much information that you can kind of integrate uh, into, into determining what the, what the right bid is for the right user. And it's really, really hard to manage all of those signals in a, in a manual way. Um, and so we say, uh, try to move to a, a smart bidding solution, target CPA, target ROAS, um, and it will make uh, your smart creatives uh, strategy much more effective. Uh, so flipping along here, there we go, the smart bidding. Um, the, the the kind of second uh, the second half outside of the outside of smart creatives will be uh, the the automated campaigns element. Um, as I mentioned, smart bidding is 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 built into all of those. We have uh, four types: smart display campaigns, which help you on the on the Google Display Network; uh, universal app campaigns, if you're uh, trying to promote an app; uh, local campaigns, um, and smart shopping campaigns as well. Um, each of those can kind of integrate smart creatives, combine it with smart bidding, and allow you to to really simplify your your campaign management um, in a much easier way. So let's start out with uh, with with search creatives. Uh, the first uh, the, the first product I mentioned here is is responsive search ads. So um, you know the the idea here is that we we saw. Uh, people trying to kind of create their own ads manually, um, and they had a lot of difficulty getting getting the quality of, of of ad you know where where it should be right. Were they really kind of tailoring their message and and creating that customized creative for for every single user? Um, and we saw that in most cases they were they were not. So um, we created this new uh, responsive, which which effectively means automated search ads product. Um, you kind of upload uh, as a, as a client the the raw inputs, the headlines, the description 
descriptions. You can see there, we, we, we ask for up to 15 headlines and up to four descriptions. Um, and machine, we use machine learning to kind of combine those different headlines and descriptions together um, and, and you know, give the highest performing ad um, to, to each individual user for each individual query. Um, and so it, it's a really powerful way, again, to just do the, do the upfront work um, provide the raw inputs, the headlines and descriptions, and the system kind of, the system kind of does does the rest. Um, and it always learns over time. So um, anything when we're talking about machine learning, it, it may kind of start out slow. It may test some different, you know, may test different combinations. Um, over time, it will always kind of figure out what is performing best, and 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 it will uh, kind of direct itself as a system to to, to showing that asset, uh, that high performing asset, more often. I think on the response of search ads piece where it's completely different to the way we've managed search ads in the past was often in the past, we'd look at averages. We'd say, what was the average click-through rate for this particular ad unit we've set up? And then when we develop new ad units, it's always, is that getting a strong click-through rate? What is that conversion rate based on? And that's always been aggregated results. It's always been based on the last 100,000, 10,000 clicks I've got coming through. Has it just been a strong performer? Now, the magic of responsive search ads is, it's building ads for each and every user. So we're not aggregating data anymore. We're saying for this user, is this the right ad to build? Give the information that we know from the auction, from your own account, here's the best ad we can deliver for you. Exactly. And one of the things you, you may have heard Google talk about last year, um, uh, I, I know I did a, a live stream on the topic, was, was audience, right? Audience is, is, is an example of a signal that is integrated now into kind of every every single auction, right? We're not we're not necessarily preaching audience as much anymore because we found that customers did make a lot of progress of putting getting their audience list, their remarketing lists, um, kind of kind of really trying to target people based on interests rather than just demographics. Um, but all of that, all of that information about uh, what the what the given profile interests of a user are are taken into account when we when we determine what the what the right uh, responsive search ad is to show. There's also you know millions of other what is it that there's what device are you on what time of day it is you know what you search recently. There's so many different signals um, and again it's it's much easier to manage that in an automated way. I'm gonna go a little faster here just for the sake of time. Um, so uh, if we think about Kind of what what a response what what a responsive search ad looks like. Um, there there's kind of uh, a, a few different um, performance components to it, right? It gives you it gives you more space than you had in in kind of traditional search ads. It gives you enhanced flexibility, um, and you can kind of control your messaging if you like using the pinning feature. So if you have a headline that you want to make sure that that shows every single time, uh, you can pin that headline um, and make sure and, and it will show up in, in every single um, in every single ad auction. So um, you know there, there's an element of automation here. There's also an element of control, and that's a key component. Uh, we did we did some Google Google internal kind of data studies, we looked at the, you know, aggregate um, uh, data across a lot of different customers. We found that you usually get about a 10% um, click uplift on average compared to the, the kind of legacy standard search ads. So really, really good, um, really, really good performance that we're seeing there. If we talk about some of the best practices, um, I'm going to flip up, make sure that all these come out at once here so you can read them through. Um, the, the key thing I think here is, is really providing um, providing the system a, a good variety of inputs to test, right? So five distinct headlines, at least two distinct descriptions. Um, you want a few of those headlines to be actually related to the keywords that you're going after, right? You want the, you want the, the, per, the, the keyword that you're targeting to match the creative that you're producing. Um, you don't want to, you want to really avoid redundancy. You don't want to have phrases uh, that, that kind of mean the same thing because that's going to basically mean that when the system tests two different, two different options, it's not actually testing anything that's different. Um, and again, the pinning feature can allow you, if you do have a very strict requirement that certain text needs to be in the, in the creative, um, you, can, you can pin that. Um, in position one, position two, whatever it may be. Um, and so again, you give you give the system of a good variety of different inputs here, um, and and it will test uh, the different combinations and figure out what is working the best. Um, another really good thing that we've uh, recently released is is uh, the ad strength metric. Uh, the ad strength metric is is visible to you in the in the Google Ads UI um, as you create the ad. Uh, I think there are four categories. Uh, 
poor, average, good, and excellent. Um, and it will basically tell you based on the, the, the number of headlines, number of descriptions, the redundancy of those descriptions, things like that. It'll tell you, is this, does it project that this ad is going to be a, a good performer? Uh, I, would shoot, I would always shoot for good or, or even excellent if you can with all of your ads. You can check this in real time. Um, if you don't see that little green circle with the checkbox there, that means that you kind of have some work to do um, and it'll, it'll kind of you know, direct you to, um, to, how, to uh, how to make those, those creatives better, whether it be adding headlines or descriptions or, or improving kind of distinctiveness, anything like that. So really good to get that instant feedback. Uh, we have a similar metric for, uh, for responsive display ads, which we'll talk about in a little bit. I particularly like this feature when we're talking about the, the ad strength, because like we mentioned previously, we're not advertising to averages anymore, we're advertising to each user. So when you're setting up ads, how do you know whether it's good or bad is the feedback we got from clients. So product have taken that on board and this is a really great way to set yourself up for success when you're building out responsive search ads. Awesome. So let's move on to DSA, uh, Dynamic Search Ads. So really, really powerful product. It's one that's actually been around a while, and for that reason, it uh, it, it works really effectively. Um, but it's not one that, at least on um, you know on our side of the business, that we've that we've pushed a tremendous amount, and and we kind of noticed a, a really strong opportunity for advertisers to improve this, and that's why we're we're really starting to uh, to to focus on it um, a lot more these days. So what DSA is is DSA is trying to um, make sure that Every single, um, every single potential query that could be related to content on your website is captured, right? So if you have, if you have a website that sells you know, denim jeans and shoes and electronics, right? Um, you might only have keywords that are, that are targeting um, you know, a, specific, uh, a specific set, or, or maybe you're only targeting denim, maybe you're not targeting electronics, something like that. Um, and what DSA is making sure that for everything that you have on your website, um, you're, you're going to be able to have creatives and be able to capture users who are who are uh, looking for for the content of your website as well. So the way it does that, it's it's a crawling, uh, it's kind of a crawling uh, algorithm that we have. DSA will will crawl all of the content of your website. Um, it will uh, sort of make sure that uh, all of the content is captured on all of the different pages, um, and it will be able to to again capture users who are who are searching for queries that are related to content on your site and provide them a creative at the same time. So it's both a, a targeting solution in terms of it kind of looking for new users. It's also a creative solution in terms of providing a uh, providing a creative for that user. When I usually think about how DSA and RSA, they don't exactly kind of integrate with one another. I think RSA is going to help you get the most out of your existing kind of manual keyword campaigns. DSA is a way to Kind of not have to almost almost not have to do um, as much manual keyword targeting anymore, right? Because it's going to um, give you your list of keywords, your list of of queries um, based on uh, crawling your site, right? You're not going to have to put that in uh, put that in manually. From a DSA perspective, there's so many benefits. If you're a new advertiser and you don't know what type of keywords you should be targeting. DSA solves that solution. I'll look across your website and deliver the right type of results for you if you pair it with a smart bidding solution. Or if you want to launch in a new country and you don't have time to manually set up these campaigns, again, DSA pops in. Or if you're massively growing, if you're a travel client who's taken on new hotels, or maybe you're an e-commerce client that's opening up a new brand on your site, DSA solves these questions of scalability and allows you to launch incredibly fast in a way that you wouldn't have been able to do before. Totally. Um, and, and you'll see on the top right there, uh, the recommended targeting setting we have. There are five different targeting settings for DSA. Um, each one kind of has different use cases. The one that we think is the most applicable is the new one. It's called target uh, targeting landing pages from your standard ad groups. So what that means is it basically just takes the ad uh, takes the landing pages that you're already targeting with your manual keyword campaigns, um, and it, it adds DSA to those pages. So it's going to make sure that if if your if your keywords if your manual keywords are missing any potential queries that are relevant to the landing pages that you have, um, DSA will capture all of those queries as well. So it's very very kind of expansive in that sense. Um, again, this is just a, a little bit of a screenshot on how DSA works. Really makes you really saves you a lot of time, as Porik said, in terms of um, keyword management. Making sure you're getting all of the potential relevant queries that 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 are uh, related to your site, uh, even if you're not kind of. Uh, 
doing so with, with manual keywords. Um, you have a search query report, which gives you a ton of insights into what DSA is doing. So again, it's automation, uh, but we are giving you insights and kind of control into what's going on. You can always exclude individual web pages if you'd like to as well. Uh, new stat, we actually had another internal study. Uh, we usually see about a 29% uplift in conversions with DSA at a 10% uh, lower uh, CPA. So really, really powerful, high-performing product, one that's been around for a while. And for that reason, um, the performance is, is really good based on the data that we've seen over time. A couple of best practices for DSA. Um, again, smart bidding is, is, is really, really key. Um, similar to what we said before, uh, unconstrained budget is really, really helpful. Uh, you don't want to, with anything automated, automated, you don't want to starve it. If you starve it of budget, you're potentially starving it of data, um, and it's not going to be able to learn and optimize as quickly. So uh, unconstrained budget is the way to go. Uh, the search terms report, again, can give you insight into how the campaign is performing, um, and you want to maximize your, your website targeting coverage. Try to try to you know reach reach all of the pages uh, across your site um, and have DSA crawl those pages. If you're if you're missing uh, if you're missing pages, you're missing potentially uh, relevant queries that that somebody could be uh, kind of typing in and and could match with your site. So again, a little bit of a comparison here between RSA and DSA. We talked about this a little bit already, but um, again, I like to think of RSA as something that is an incremental add on top of your um, on top of your existing manual key keyword campaigns. Um, and DSA is, is a little bit more of an expansive solution. It's going to make sure you capture anything that you missed. Um, and in some cases, it, it may actually outperform your existing uh, keyword campaigns. We see that a lot with uh, broad match, with broad match keywords. DSA, because it's it's crawling the website and, and really taking a very, very specific look at the content of your site, um, sometimes it can um, capture a query in a more specific way than a broad match or a broad match modifier keyword. Um, and so um, it can actually be better than your, your manual keyword campaigns in some cases as well. Um, if you start with DSA and you, again, as I said, you don't know what queries to go after. You just start with uh, DSA in a new campaign, and you um, you you eventually see you know that a certain keyword is performing really well that DSA is capturing. You can split that keyword into an exact match campaign and have a little bit more control over over doing it that way as well. Um, but it's that combination of of being able to have some manual you know exact match keyword targeting and then some DSA to kind of capture uh, anything that you may be missing uh, on other landing pages or on landing pages that you're going after. Flip over to the display side. Um, it's it's you know it, it's a very similar principle here. Uh, we saw that people were creating display ads and they were um, you know generally unable to um, get the quality that they needed, or they were unable to to fit in all of the different slots across the Google Display Network. There's something like two or three thousand different uh, ad slots that a, that a display ad can fit in. Um, if you're creating ads manually, there's a very very low chance that you're you're actually going to be able to fit into each and each and every one of those slots. Um, and so what uh, responsive display ads has come in to be able to do is again, you give the kind of uh, headlines, images, descriptions, logo, all of the raw inputs. The system uses machine learning to make sure that you can get the full reach across the Google Display Network um, and also uh, be able to show that highest performing ad um, to, to each individual user depending on their interests and, and depending on kind of their, their browsing behavior. Um, so across uh, the, the Display Network, YouTube and Gmail, um, this is a really, really effective way to, to create your display ads. Um, I think on that one, there's another great example of automation solving a problem. So in the past, when people were launching display campaigns, they'd focus on their skyscrapers, their 300 by 250, and wouldn't build out the additional assets that they needed to run across the whole display network. And when you question their ass advertisers on it, mostly it's because of time and not being able to do this. Now, with responsive display ads, like Eric was saying, we take care of that for you. Provide us with the assets and we'll make sure that we're delivering the right ad in the right unit for, for your users. And when you think about users who are moving across devices, they're on their mobile, they're used to more native feeling uh, ad units on websites, it's a, it's a game changer. Totally. And remember how big the display, I mean, there's, there's something like million, was it 2 million websites in the display network? Like even if you're covering, let's say you could cover 50% of it using manuals kind of legacy display ads, um, you're still missing the, the other 50%. That's a tremendous number of websites, a tremendous number of people. Um, and so uh, it's really important to get the fullest reach possible. Uh, so again, similar principle here in terms of how, um, 
how how the responsive display you know ads are set up we we want you to automate the creation of the ads but we want to give you kind of insights and control into them as well so um, you will get very very good insights into you know things like ad strength how is uh how is the ad performing um, you will uh, be able to kind of if you have specific brand requirements you can kind of choose certain colors for your ads to make sure that they show up um, you can choose which text and images to highlight to make sure they show up as well so we want to give you that control um, to make sure that if you have brand requirements that you can meet them uh, even in a responsive way um, and so um, there shouldn't be there shouldn't be worries about it being a black box or anything like that right we're going to we're going to help you automate and help you you know reach individual users with the right query uh, uh, with the right browsing behavior, but um, we want to give you control and insights into it as well. This is kind of what a, what it looks like uh, in the in the um, Google Ads UI itself. Um, you have a, a again we talked about the ad strength metric. You get some very very real time feedback in terms of how your assets are performing here. So if you see anything that is kind of less than less than subpar, you don't have a green check mark, you don't have enough images, headlines, descriptions, logos, whatever it is. Make sure you fill up all of those assets and give the system all of the inputs that it needs. You also get a really really strong preview tool you see here in the bottom right um, to to make sure you get a sense of what these ads are actually going to look like um, on, the, on the web. That was something we, uh, we heard a lot from, from advertisers. They were surprised um, in terms of what their, their ads looked like when they got onto the web. And we created this very nice, um, robust preview feature to make sure that there's no, uh, there's no surprises here. Best practices. Um, very, very similar to what we were talking about on the responsive search ad side. Give yourself a lot of assets, a lot of distinct assets, right? So the system has a lot of different inputs to test and to combine with one another. Uh, you can see all of the, the numbers of those assets um, a little bit below here. Five images, five descriptions, five headlines, one, uh, one image, and uh, one headline as well. Um, and then uh, you want to you know, another thing about the display network is it's really got to be, you know, remember a user is not typing in a keyword here. So you've got to make sure that the call to action is really good. The images are really strong um, and that the images are, are relevant to what you're offering. So if you're offering, um, you know, uh, 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 you're selling cameras, right? Um, you know, I think you you may not, you know, here's here would be a picture of, of, of a couple of children having a good time. You know, that may not be, you could take a picture of that, but that's not exactly related to what you're offering. So you want to, um, you know, have a image uh, and have text that relates exactly to what um, you're, you're selling on your website and that you want to direct the user to. Don't let there be any confusion. Users are not, you know, think about yourself on the web. You're not going around thinking about, oh, what is this? What does this ad really mean? I really think, you know, I, I'm going to try to figure this one out, right? You, you look at it. If, it. if it appeals to you, you kind of quickly click it. Um, and so uh, make sure there's kind of relevance and a strong call to action there. I'm going to give it over to Parik to, to talk about automated campaigns, and we'll take some questions on, on all of this at the end. Brilliant. So the first type of automated campaign we want to talk about is smart display campaigns. So with smart display campaigns, we're letting you broaden your customer base and acquire new customers by stepping outside of just search. And so in order to get started, all you need is just the building blocks of a strong campaign. You need to decide what targets you're going after, whether it's ROAS or CPA, decide your campaign budget, and provide us with the creative assets. And from there, we'll do the rest. We're going to be optimizing towards those goals and using the inputs that you provided to us to be able to drive the right type of results to you. The same principles uh, apply in terms of giving us enough data and giving us a variety of data as well, but we've seen really strong performance coming from smart display campaigns. And in addition, it saves a, a, a lot of time with that initial campaign setup. Yeah, we talked. We just talked about the responsive display ads, right? This this plugs right into Smart Display, right? Smart Display is a way to automate your entire campaign. It includes responsive display ads, right? When you when you give the creative assets here, it's going to kind of you you know it's going to give you those same responsive display ads that we just talked about. It's also going to automate again the entire um, rest of your you know the entire rest of your campaign. It's going to automate the bidding, automate the targeting, make sure it's it's going to look at kind of any audience lists you have in the account um, and try to. Um, allow you to start off on the display network um, and do so uh, across the entire uh, GDN in a very, um, very quick and easy way. Um, and so we've seen really, really good results from, um, you know, from doing that. And I think when you think about all these products, the question you should be asking yourself is scale and control. Where do I sit in that um, 
line. Do I need to have more control over these campaigns? Maybe then responsive display campaigns make sense, or do I need to scale as quickly as possible and drive the right type of results? And this is where these automated campaigns really come to their to their power and their strength. And we can also just talk about the quickly the, the importance of display in the first place. We see a lot of people in the past, I ask them, what is your what is your customer journey look like? And they say, you know, it starts when somebody searches for us. Um, and that's kind of a, a very kind of old school way of thinking about things, right? If you think about it, it's like, I think it's about 20% of time people online is spent searching. Another 80% of your time is, is spent across the, the rest of the web. Um, and so it's really important to try to go a little bit higher than that, than that, you know, up further up in the traditional marketing funnel than when somebody is actually searching for you, typing in the keyword, right? You want to be able to, to reach them um, when they're doing other things as well. And we have a very good way of, of kind of looking at people's browsing behavior, determining if they might be interested in your product or service. Um, and if you're if you're kind of trying to go after them with something like smart display campaigns, you're going to reach them before they even start searching in the first place and actually drive more of that lower funnel activity. So um, it's a really good way to kind of uh, beat people to the punch and, and not just wait for them to, to find their way and eventually search for your, uh, your particular terms. The other automated campaign that we're seeing great success with is smart shopping campaigns. So with smart shopping campaigns, we can simplify your campaign management. All we need from you is your existing product feed for you to set up a shopping campaign. And we'll combine these assets with Google's machine learning and show a variety of ads across uh, all of our networks. So that's YouTube, that's display, Gmail, and, and search. The real core benefits to this campaign type is it's easy to set up, it's fully automated, and we're seeing incredibly powerful results coming from these smart shopping campaigns. From some of the internal analysis we've done, we saw a 20% increase in conversion value than standard campaigns. And when you think about it, it makes sense. When we can look across the whole ad networks, we can identify opportunities that exist outside search to drive the right type of results. Yeah. Totally. Really, really powerful, particularly for retail advertisers. You saw for both display campaigns, we saw about a 20% higher um, volume of conversions compared to standard display campaigns for, for smart shopping campaigns, um, similar to, to the legacy shopping, uh, legacy shopping campaigns as well. So uh, really, really good results from what we're, what we're seeing here, particularly for retail advertisers. Then I think you will all be familiar, familiar with uh, universal app campaigns. It was one of our very first automated campaigns. With this campaign type, we can drive app downloads at scale across multiple different networks. It allows you to be discoverable across all these different networks. It allows you to have control over your billing strategies, the budgets and the assets that you provide. And using our algorithm again, we can identify opportunities to drive the right type of business results for you. So basically what we're asking you to do is decide your strategy. If you've got an app and you're looking to promote it, what way are you looking to promote it? And once you've made those decisions from a budget, from a KPI setting, you can just get started straight off the bat. The other campaign type that we're really excited about is local campaigns. Uh, the main purpose behind local campaigns is to drive store visits. So we know that customers are moving offline to online and that transition is incredibly smooth. And so with this new campaign type, we're allowing you to use some of Google's best features online to drive offline results. So with local campaigns, it's going to target across all of Google's network. So it's going to include formats on search, on display, on YouTube, and importantly, on maps as well. And then again, it's fitting into that key solution for advertiser. It's a question of simplicity and scale. So again, you can use Google's uh, machine learning to ensure that we're serving the right ads to the right users and optimize to that store visit. Just want to just want to kind of re yeah, reiterate reiterate all of the different um, all of the different kind of types of campaigns we have going here, right? So you know, I think it's pretty hard to be an advertiser that doesn't that doesn't that doesn't fall into um, you know one of these buckets to to be able to find value out of these different types of campaigns. If you're a retail advertiser, you have um, a lot of physical locations, or if you're a non-retail advertiser, you have a lot of physical locations. Uh, local campaigns will be awesome. If you're an app advertiser, you want to promote your app, try to get downloads, try to get more users. Universal app campaigns really really good way to go. Uh, if you are an e-commerce advertiser, smart 
smart shopping is going to be an awesome fit for you. If you are um, any other type of advertiser, you want to kind of expand beyond search, right? Smart display can be a great way to do that. Um, and then you know we you notice we didn't have a we didn't have a campaign called smart search campaigns right maybe we'll have that in the future perhaps but um, just remember that the other automated types of campaigns that we talked about uh, automated solutions that we talked about on the search side we talked about uh, the new responsive search ads we talked about dynamic search ads that allow you to kind of crawl your entire website and make sure that you're uh, capturing all of the all of the queries possible in an automated way and capturing and, and serving a customized creative to those users um, and so there's you know, no matter who you are, there's there's a really great um, crop of automated solutions that you can uh, that you can benefit from, uh, and that can give you um, insights and control um, even even while doing your your kind of targeting, your bidding, things like that in an automated way. So yeah, we can just kind of wrap up uh, here before we get into questions. Um, we don't want to. Let's just flip back one more there. Um, Thank you. We uh, we want to kind of get away from uh, spending time on manual keyword lists and creatives, right? We think that's not an effective way to spend your time. Um, it's it's going to be very hard for you to, to replicate the performance that you, that that uh, a machine learning algorithm can. So we want you to free up time to work on other things. Uh, we want to still give you control over the look and feel of your of your ads and 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 insights about any automated campaign that you're running. We we don't want anything to be a black box, and we want you to benefit and be able to see all of the data that we're making use of as well. Um, Smart creatives are going to be the highest performing uh, creative solution that you can have. You're going to um, be able to serve the, the exactly relevant creative for each individual user, depending on their browsing behavior and profile. Um, and then automated campaigns are going to allow you to simplify your campaign management, reach both new and returning customers um, in, an, in an automated way. And, and in, some, you know, in many cases, have smart creatives actually plug into those automated campaigns as well. So um, a, lot of, uh, a, a lot of great solutions that we covered there for sure. Um, and moving forward, we, we, you know, we do have a series of, of episodes kind of upcoming here on, on the Academy on Air series. Uh, machine learning is, is one that we're going to talk about next. Uh, very, very uh, black box of a topic, really easy words to say. And I feel like I know what a machine is. I know what learning is. But when you put them together, uh, it's, it's quite a complex topic. So uh, we're going to try to make that easier for, for you guys to understand and, and help you um, understand how we use machine learning every day here at Google. Um, so, so stay tuned for that. Um, and that will be, I guess, episode uh, episodes four and four and five uh, upcoming. So um, look look out for for invites for those, and and we'll have um, we'll have other folks from our team here coming to uh, uh, coming to to provide those to you. Thanks for joining. Let's do some let's do some Q and A. I'm going to flip over here to see if we got any questions throughout the. Um, oh, we got plenty of questions. Look at this. All right, let's um, let me just see if I can flip through this and be able to see the questions here. I don't have time for all of these, but I can go through some of them. Let's look at, I see the first one here from, from Terry. We have with RSA, is there going to be a point where we are able to see which combination works best? Um, so I believe we are, um, I, forget, I think it's called a combinations report, something like that. I believe that is something that we're working on. Um, it, it's possible it's already it's it's possible it's already available. Um, so I would just check check your your Google Ads UI to see if you you see any report in there. If you don't, um, I think we are going to be able to provide that to you soon. Uh, again, that's that's something we we want you to understand which um, you know which combin which which assets are, are working well in conjunction. At the same time, we. You know, it can be difficult to to actually replicate and show every single combination that's happening there. So, um, you know, there, there's there, as you can imagine, there's thousands, millions of them, um, and it can be difficult to pr to produce that in a given report. But we we do want you to give you insights into which assets are performing well and which assets are are not performing as well. Yeah. So with, with the combination report, it is I, I believe it's there in the account ready where it is coming. The important thing to know is from a combination perspective, it's understanding what's happening. But you also have to take into consideration that we're trying to build an ad for each and every user. So when we're looking at different combination, we're moving back up to that historical view of aggregating things out and saying which preci uh, precise combination work best. And in many cases, there won't be just one single combination that work best. It's going to be multiple different com combinations and defined best will be defined by the user as well. 
we had another question, a similar question here about reporting. So this is good feedback for us. It, it, it does seem like we have a um, some common feedback that reporting could could be a little bit more robust, and, and we'll make sure to to, to kind of relay that. Um, take take a stock of, of of kind of what the reporting is now, and and uh, try to try to make that a little bit more um, a little bit more robust. Um, as I mentioned, it is difficult to, to truly provide insight about every different every single different combination, but um, I think we're um, we're getting there, and, we'll, and we're going to continue to to kind of give you um, insights as well. Um, I see a question here about ETA expanded text ads um, relating to kind of the number the the amount of space that's available. Uh, I think that you know you're right here. The, the amount of space is the same. I think that the difference we're saying is that. Um, you know, responsive search ads allows you, it gives you more space to kind of provide more inputs. Even if the ultimate output is the same, you're, you have a lot more flexibility in the in the number of inputs that you can test and combine with one another. And I think that's what the value is. Another thing we, we, we see very often is that, um, uh, is that people kind of compare the, the performance of RSA, responsive search ads, and the performance of ETA, right? It's, we're not really saying here that one is better than the other, that we are going to see, you know, if RSA is not performing as well as ETA, you should shut it off, right? RSA is, is an incremental addition. It's going to help you show up in a relevant way for more queries than, than what, what ETA allows you to show up for. Uh, and so, um, it's it's incrementally um, additive. We want you to look at you know you should look at the performance of the entire ad group with ETA and RSA um, before and after you you added RSA to that ad group um, and see if at the entire aggregated ad group level you're you're seeing better performance in terms of conversions, CPA, things like that. Um, so it's not it's not a mutually exclusive decision here one one versus the other. Trying to read this question. Is there yeah, a so in addition to this, we've got a question. Is there going to be an ability to use automation and ad rotation based on both click-through rate and conversion rate? Okay, so if I understand this correctly, the question is, will we be able to change the ad show not just based on the conversion rate, but on, on the, the click-through rate? So the way our smart bidding strategies work is they're very clearly delineated between two main goals performance and then brand metrics so when we're talking about performance metrics we're talking about things like maximize conversion tcpa and TROAS, and that bid strategy will optimize towards that conversion rate when we talk about brand metrics we have other automated bidding strategies such as top of page reports and impression share uh, targeting maximized clicks. And those ones are geared towards the number of clicks and impression share that we have here as well. There, at the moment, there's no plan to combine those type of bidding strategies together that you would focus on the conversion rate and a click to rate. For performance strategies, our single goal is typically that conversion rate or conversion value that we can drive at each query. Yeah, I think I think all of all of what Porik said is right there. I mean, I think we're responsive search ads, responsive display ads, all of these smart creatives, they're designed to be performance driving solutions, right? So we're going to we're going to be able, you know, it's going to be able to understand the system, the conversion rate, the CTR, the the CPA, things like that. It's going to be able to serve the right the right, the best performing ad for that user based on whatever goals that you're trying to optimize for on the campaign. Um, and that's what your bidding strategy is basically telling the campaign is what are what are your goals. Um, and so uh, we integrate all of this information and we'll show ads kind of based on that. Uh, I think, I think you know, we, we, we still do talk about, you know, a metric like CTR a little bit too much. I see another question here about, you know, basing testing based on CTR. CTR is just a it, it's not a particularly relevant metric from a performance perspective, right? We want to focus more on CPA, on conversions, on conversion rate, things that things that are actually determined in, um, you know, that are perf performance driving metrics that are related to what you're actually trying to drive. CTR is just a just a clicking metric. It's not um, it's not necessarily telling you much about you know how those users are actually performing, um, you know, when they you know when they when they reach a site. So. Um, I think uh, that that's a metric that we try to want to we, we want to try to move a little bit away from. I will add on on display something like relative CTR um, can be a good metric. That might be one that you have to add manually. Relative CTR basically looks at um, it uses a hundred percent as a as a baseline, um, and if if your metric is below a hundred percent, it means that your ad is is 
relatively less likely than a similar ad to be uh, to be clicked. If it's over 100%, it's relatively more likely. Um, and so that is a that is a metric that that can be useful to be able to to understand how your your display creatives are performing. Uh, look for a relative CTR that's ideally over 100%. Let's see what else we have here. I just want to kind of take stock of we have a lot of different. Uh, Questions. Here's here's a short one. What strategy would you recommend when you're setting up when setting up a smart display campaign for retailers? Um, Park, I figure you take one probably of TCPA or, or Target ROAS as well, right? Yeah. So for if you're setting up a campaign uh, fresh off the bat, we would typically recommend using say a CPA if you know what the CPA target is. So target CPA or else using maximize uh, conversions. If you're not quite sure what type of CPA there is, we want to drive as many conversions as possible with that budget. The reason why we'd recommend those two particular campaigns for uh, two, those two particular bidding strategies for a new campaign is you can utilize those straight off the bat. So the updates that we've made to those bidding algorithms mean that you can start with zero eligibility. So without any conversion history in your account, we've seen them perform significantly better than manual CPC with about a 20% uplift. So in this particular case, I'd recommend you to utilize either target CPA or maximize uh, for conversions. I see a question here about ad strength. Is it is it determined in the auction? It's It's not a... It's not technically deter, you know, entering the auction, but ad strength is, is kind of going to be connected to your your sort of quality score, right? So um, it's it's not it's not in the auction per se, but ad strength is is looking at the same kind of inputs that are going to determine the the relevance, the quality score of your ad, and so it is sort of integrated in in that sense. Um, and and remember, ad strength is going to be a result of sort of how. Um, how an ad is uh, how an ad is per performing right so it's it's going to um if, it, if it's telling you that you have poor ad strength it's probably not a very you know it probably has a low quality score it's probably not performing very well and you should you should improve it vice versa if it's doing well um it uh it's probably performing well as well uh, i see another question here about rsa dsa uh setting the the rsa landing normally we set our rsa landing page to the end product detail page should dsa uh, should we consider using the product category listing page instead? So uh, I talked about that setting, um, you know, that targeting setting for DSA that we recommend first, which is landing pages from your standard ad groups. So um, that's the that's the first thing I would I would probably say to do. It's the easiest to apply. It's a good way to get started with DSA. It's just going to take again all of those end product detail pages and be able to put DSA. Um, onto them. It's, it's one click, one setting. It will look at all of the landing pages that you're already targeting in the account. Um, we do have a, a different targeting setting for DSA called categories targeting, which, which is, is really, I think, what you're, what you're asking here in the question. Um, that that is, is something worth trying as well. That's going to look at those. It's going to look at the categories. It's going to crawl your website and, and figure out what, uh, what kind of common categories there are um, and be able to uh, be able to kind of group those um, group those categories into into kind of different um, different buckets as well. So categories targeting is another thing that I think you could try. I don't think um, it's 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 kind of clear which one is going to be better. You could actually use both of them, um, but I would maybe consider setting you know setting both of them up and see which one uh, works better. I think categories targeting is a little bit um, a little bit broader, right? Whereas uh, whereas uh, landing pages from your standard ad groups a little bit more um, a little bit better balance between kind of that reach and reach and control. Um, and I think that uh, some of the other forms of DSA targeting, we talk about all web pages, uh, page feeds, those are a little bit more complex. I would probably stick with, with categories, landing pages from your standard ad groups, or you could actually pick individual landing pages um, and just go with those URLs. We have another question here. Um, about smart shopping campaigns being a being a black box. Um, yeah, I'll, I'll, go I'll go for an answer. I think it kind of echoes what Eric mentioned around RSA and DSA. So we give options to advertisers to have more control. And so if you need more control over a campaign and you feel there's a benefit that you can drive by manually inputting that information, the options are there. So for instance, if you feel you have more control and understanding of how you should be targeting your, your campaigns and um, use shopping and use dynamic remarketing and targeting on YouTube. If for you the real challenge is scale, then we would advise you to use our automated campaigns. 
And by the very nature, and not going into too technical, but the very nature of how machine learning works it is slightly a black box in terms of it's able to look at all these different combinations that we can't hard code into our accounts. And so when we launch these automated campaigns, we're really trying to solve the problem of scale. Totally. Yeah, I think, um, you know, certainly give us feedback if you feel that there's not enough reporting performance. Um, I think that's something as a uh, Google in principle, really, we know we have so much data and we want we want you to be able to access it, but we don't want to give you um, the level of control to which point you could um, kind of not not get value out of the automation anymore. If you kind of just control away the automation, um, it's not going to be able to perform in the way that you want. And so um, I, I think you're going to continue to see uh, greater insights, greater reporting features. That's a principle we, we continue to roll out with every different type of campaign um, and new solution that we come with. Um, but uh, it, it does take time, and I think it's it's worth starting out and then being patient. And I think over time, uh, we, we will be able to kind of uh, you know help you um, fulfill your needs and, and fulfill your uh, kind of insight desire for insights as well. Yeah, I, I think that's a great point as well. Like when you look at the changes that have been made to add strength and the reporting that we give in uh, responsive display ads and responsive search ads, that all came from advertisers wanting to have a bit more information and control in their account. So this feedback is, is brilliant. Totally. Um, so guys, thanks for thanks for joining. I think we uh, we have to wrap up here um, and 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 head to head to our next meetings. But um, thanks for thanks for jumping on. Hopefully you learned some stuff, um, and we'll have uh, future future episodes upcoming on, on on different topics and continue to to kind of reach out to us. Um, and, and provide us feedback on, on how things are going for you. We, we'd love to hear from, from customers all the time. So um, thanks again for joining and, and uh, have a good rest of your day uh, wherever you are out there.